A Canon 5D Mark III or a Nikon D800? It's a showdown today on Geek Beats. This episode of Geek Beat TV is brought to you by Jack Threads. Two amazing photographers, two totally different camera choices. Over here we have Trey Rockliffe with the Nikon D800. And our very own John P. with the Canon 5D Mark III. What's it gonna be? Uh, the one thing that they do actually agree on is that Jack Threads is awesome and cool, right guys? Well, you can get your very own clothes from Jack Threads for up to 80% off and be one of the cool kids. <laughs> Just go to jackthreads.com slash geekbeat. All right, boys, are you ready? Yes, The He's rules. Not. The rules are no biting, no hitting below the belt, no screaming. Get out. You know it. Be nice. All right. All right, so you've got what thing. Why did you buy a Nikon D800? Well, because it's the best. This camera completes me. <laughs> okay, but will yours take six frames per second? No, but when it does shoot, it doesn't sound as effet as that. Whatever. It's got like a manly... Let's hear it. Yours sounds like a refined lady in high heels walking across a parquet floor. Let's hear it. Mine sounds like a man shooting an AK-47. Four frames per second is more than enough. Yours sounds like an 80-year-old man with a cane <laughs> every other step, okay? Come on, four frames per second. They had That was called the Canon 5D Mark II, okay? Well, look, this one has many advantages that one doesn't. Okay, tell me about them. All right, it has 36 megapixels to the 22. Okay. One, it has... Of course, you can get a little uh, $100 camera with 15 megapixels. We both know megapixel count don't mean nothing. Well, it does have uh, it does have importance. Maybe you're not thinking into the future <laughs> as much as I am. Okay. Then, it also shoots uh, much better color depth, 25.3 bits instead of 24. Okay. It has a higher EV dynamic range. This is 14.4 EV. That's only 11.7. Okay. Uh, this is 50 grams lighter than that one. True. And most importantly, mm -hmm. it's $500 cheaper than that one. That's true. Tell me about the light sensitivity. What ISO is that capable of? Well, maybe... I believe that's 25,000 where this is over a hundred. Well, that's true. You got me on that one. Yeah. But this one's plenty sensitive. It's okay. sensitive enough. Maybe Don't... you're a little oversensitive. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Don't forget, they've also added full-on HD movie recording with headphone outputs mm -hmm. and on-screen audio monitoring. Plus, you know that this is the camera of choice for videographers, so they make all kinds of rigs, gear, manual controls, etc. It's true. If you're into serious videography, Canon's probably the way to go, but this does pretty much the same thing. One thing this does do that yours doesn't is uncompressed HDMI out. No, this one does that. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm <laughs> pretty it's sure. Got, it's got the full on HDMI out, so okay. we could hook well, it up. Might be right. We could hook it up to a TriCaster, yeah. just like uh, Dave is over there shooting us on, yeah. and uh, get the full on monitoring. I could a, be wrong, you do have but I'm headphone pretty jack. sure. I don't have the... I thought yours had a headphone jack. No, the D4 does. Oh. Uh, but that'll cost you an extra $3,000 for a headphone jack. So, actually, if you want to really do full-on serious video recording, uh, you're probably better off with this sucker for 600 bucks extra. Yeah, but I think that... But if you have a huge selection of Nikon lenses already, you might want to go with one of those. That's, Even though it is kind of a slow old man camera, right? <laughs> That's been the traditional line of thought, is that you just keep lenses and you swap out bodies over time. But I think that whole line of thinking around buying DSLR, I think this will actually be my last DSLR. I think, really? I think DSLRs are overall, just talking meta here, uh -huh. uh, a dying breed. I think in two, three, four years, I won't be using a DSLR. I think I'll be using these smaller, mirrorless, next-gen cameras. You think that even though they have smaller sensors, you think they're going to start getting the bigger full-on sensors and all yeah. the autofocus points and all their stuff? Yeah. Because I tend to think that what they're going to do is the big camera bodies will still be around. These intermediate size ones, like these units, yeah. I, I agree. These, these, are, these may go away, but the big ones, like the 1D... 
uh, or the you know your your old Nikon uh, what was it D three X D three X yeah I think yeah. those large format ones they'll just keep cramming more features into them and they'll stick around. Well, they can't really put many more features into them. They're pretty much good enough for creating a kind of art form. They're good enough. Like once you have a good paintbrush, you know they don't keep adding features to a paintbrush. It's good enough. It does what it's meant to do, and that's kind of where the high end DSLRs these. People that still use the high-end DSLRs, they're going to be really more and more niche, like sports guys yep. and maybe animal photographers. Yep. People that need something A super rugged, lens. big lenses, super fast. Uh, but like, for example, I used to just, you know, three months ago, I carried my D3X as my main camera, yep. which I'm just now putting on eBay. And then I had a D3S slung over my shoulder for people shots and thing shots. But now, this is sort of my main camera for my kind of epic landscape type shots I like to do. It saves a lot of weight. It saves a lot of weight. And my second camera is now a Sony NEX7. Much smaller. Which is about one-fourth the size yeah. of this. It's 24 megapixel. It has an APS-C sensor. It's an amazing camera. And that's just now kind of in the beginning of 2012. Wait till the end of 2012 or 2013. Wait till you see what Sony does next. Well, and if you want to go even one step further downsizing, you could go with the new Canon, the, 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 what's it called? The 12, uh, the, it's the 12 replacement. What do they call it though? EX, one EX, something like that. I don't anyway, know. you Canon people it's, with your crazy. Anyway, it's tiny. It's a yeah. tiny little pocket camera. Great, yeah. great stuff. But Ultimately, I think people are going to upgrade to whatever lens, you know, whatever's going to match the lenses they've already invested in. Because after all, this body is cheap compared to the collection of lenses we both have. Yeah, it's true. These lens, I mean, the body is amazing. If this was, and I'm not just saying that about your body. Oh, uh, thank just, you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, you can really squeeze so much into these tiny bodies now. It's, uh, they're really remarkable. Uh, but I'm in a little bit of a, a quandary about, I have camera recommendations on my page, like good, better, and best. And I do have trouble recommending uh, a lot of these DSLRs. We're sort of in this intermediate phase. I do recommend this D800. I think it's sort of like one of the, the best things you can get for the money. For $3,000, it's, it's really remarkable. We'll have to take some, uh, you know what we should do? Let's take some sample photos around the office with the two of them, with the okay. lens settings as close as we can, right. and then we'll append them here so you guys can see what the two differences look like. I imagine they're going to be pretty similar. Well, I imagine mine will be better. Well, I, I mean, I was just being <laughs> kind to you because we all know yeah. this is going to be better. But anyway, you guys okay. stick around for more. Subscribe on geekbeat.tv and head on over to youtube.com forward slash geekbeat.tv. We're out of here. Okay, I guess I won't do the outro. That was good. The Nikon D three hundred. No. Nope. And eight hundred on P with the Mark through Canon Mark, you know something, right. something or other. When you.